Monster Party on Nintendo is a pretty tough game to sum up in only a few words. It's pretty obscure and definitely unorthodox. The title alone gives you the indication of the game's blend of horror and comedy. So does the title screen. I mean, you've got the gruesome looking sign with the green blood behind the title art. And then at the bottom, these monsters parade across the screen one at a time. What the hell is that? Shrimp? An onion ring? Are you kidding? What the hell kind of game is this? Well, let's break down the story, and maybe we can make some sense out of it. The main character is this young boy named Mark. While walking home from a baseball game, this gargoyle alien comes out of the sky and asks him for help in saving this planet from evil monsters. Mark isn't initially frightened or even surprised that this mutant from outer space just came out of nowhere. Mark doesn't really want to go because all he has for a weapon is a baseball bat. The alien, whose out of place name is Bert, insists that the bat will make an adequate weapon, grabs him by the hand, and just flies off. Mark never agrees to go, but he just goes along with it anyway without resistance. I guess he figures that this crazy alien could just fuck him up if he wanted to. So they fuse together or some shit, I don't know. And then the game begins. So you take control of Mark and you go about these levels in side-scrolling fashion armed with your trusty bat. It kinda sucks that you have to get so close to your foes in order to kill them, since your only attack is a simple swing of the bat. But you get a life meter and you can take plenty of hits. Sometimes your enemies leave power-ups, which consist of hearts, pills, and question marks. The heart increases your health, the pill will transform you into Bert, and the question mark could be either one, or just points. When you switch to Bert, you can really rip some shit up. You can shoot and you can fly. The enemies don't stand much of a chance against you when you're Bert, but after a short period of time they'll turn back into Mark. One has to question Bert's recruiting skills here. I mean, Bert kicks ass, he flies, he shoots, he fries these monsters into liquid shit. Mark swings a bat and, and that's about it. And Mark does a lot less damage with that bat. And he does most of the work. Why would Bert go through the trouble of traveling hundreds of thousands of miles through space to enlist in the help of this punk kid who's about 20 times weaker than him? And why does it have to be giant horse pills that turn you into Bert? My guess is that the designers stuck a bit of symbolism on how they were stoned out of their fucking minds when they came up with some of the ideas for this game. Anyway, there are a total of eight levels, not including the final boss, or in this game, the levels are called rounds. Within each round, there are several doorways you can enter. Some rooms are empty, and serve no purpose other than steering you off course, and others have a boss, where you'll do battle with some pretty strange creatures. And every boss says something before each battle, usually something real cheesy. There are usually three bosses per level, and once you clear all of them, you'll get a key that'll allow you to pass to the next round. If your health meter runs out, you die, and it's a game over. You have infinite continues and a password feature. The controls are a little awkward, but once you get used to them, they're not much of a problem. The part that sucks the most is when you're striking an enemy that takes several hits to kill, and as you're hitting it, it's slowly creeping towards you no matter how many times you swing. So you're gonna get hit unless you retreat and have to line yourself up with it all over again. At least you can hit some of the projectiles back at them. The graphics are mediocre. Some of the bosses look pretty good, but most of them have little to no animation or movements. Some just stand there in one place as projectiles fly out of it. But despite the graphics' basic flaws, there's one part they did a good job with, and it's one thing that you won't see in many other NES games. Blood. Although there's no actual bloodshed while you battle through the game, there's plenty to go around decoratively. The password screen, some of the backgrounds, and the round start scenes are filled to the brim with blood and skeletons and all that. It's tamed by today's standards, and although the game isn't exactly scary, the morbid images definitely should be given credit where it's due. The gameplay is surprisingly fun. It's not addictive, it's not perfect, it's not boring. It just is what it is. So let's go through it. Well, level 1 doesn't look too frightening. I mean, look at all the smiley faces and the colorful background. Everything looks honky-dory. And these enemies aren't too scary so far either. You got this guy that looks like the goth kid in South Park, and some guy that's halfway stuck in the ground. The first door you'll enter contains Audrey 2. I mean, a flirtatious man-eating plant. And he's firing bubbles at you. How lame is that? Sorry, but only Bubble Man from Mega Man 2 can fire bubbles as a deadly weapon and get away with it. So just stand back and swing your bat whenever the bubbles head in your direction. They'll bounce back at you. This battle takes forever to finish since he takes a lot of hits, so you can just charge and hit him with your bat if you want to save some time, but you'll lose more health that way. So after you're done with the plant, move on, kill some more easy enemies, you go through this door and you'll encounter the most grueling boss battle in history. A dead giant spider. He even apologizes for dying. Sorry, I'm dead. It's cheesy, but it's gold. 
This boss battle doesn't even technically happen, but you can't beat this level without entering the room. So, moving along, so far so good. Whoa, what the fuck is going on? Oh my god, we're on the dark side now. Look at what happened. The backgrounds are gloomier, the smiley faces turned into bloody skulls, the ground went from green grass to green glob, and that giant green statue's face is now all disfigured. The music also grows much darker and is actually one of the better pieces of music throughout the game. There are a few enemies added to the stage too. These are a little more frightening. So if you kill this ugly ass dog right around here, you'll always get a pill. Your next boss is a ghost with a jack o' lantern for a head that fires mini jack o' lanterns at you. Just keep flying over him and firing when he passes by. You'll take a few hits, but it shouldn't be too bad. When you're done, you'll have beaten all three bosses in the first stage and you get a key, which is displayed at the bottom right hand corner. The key unlocks the door to the next level, and these doors are always at the end of the stage, and they're always distinguishable from all the other doors. And each time you advance to another level, your health meter will increase by 8 points. So round 2 is next, and here we're in what looks like a sewer. The enemies are easy. The reverse mermaids just walk back and forth, the mouth that pukes blood just stays in one spot, and the alligators and dinosaur eggs fire shit that you can easily repel back at them. So you enter the first door and you'll encounter this medusa with a snake for a body that fires off little snakes at you, although they look more like fat oversized slugs. You could fire the snakes back, but it takes a while and you're gonna take a lot of hits anyway, so just charge and swing your bat. After you move along a little further, you'll always get a pill from this manfish. If you hurry up, you'll get to the second boss in time to fight as Bert for about half the battle. And of all the bosses of the game, this has to be the most bizarre. It's called Shrimp Attack, and yes, it's the same as the three food products that scrolled across the title screen. After a few hits, the shrimp turns into an onion ring, and then the onion ring turns into a shish kebab. I guess since this is a monster party, food is essential. I mean, what party is complete without hors d'oeuvres? Who am I kidding? This is fucking retarded. Killing this combination play is pretty simple. Attack when it charges, drop down real quick so it doesn't hit you, get a few more hits from behind, rinse, wash, and repeat. You'll later find a pill when you kill this alligator. Fly up this ladder and head left to the door at the end. And now you'll do battle with a well that throws dishes at you. Apparently, this is based off some kind of story that's famous in Japan, but no one knows shit about it in the US. But the funny thing is, despite the fact that this game was developed in Japan, it was exclusively released in the US, so nobody who plays this game is going to understand it. It's pretty easy to avoid the plates, while flying and shooting rapidly will finish it off in no time. You've got the key, and now you can get the hell out. Round 3 is inside a cave, and I guess Mark had a change of clothes with him, because he's sporting a pink outfit now. I'm sure the reason is simply to keep him from blending in with the green background too much, but Bert's pink too! How does he change colors like that? Why couldn't they just be sure not to design green levels? Oh well, a change of scenery can't hurt. And the graphics in this stage are pretty sweet. Well, at least the backgrounds are. The platforms are just the same block of rock over and over again. The music is also exceptionally catchy. So keep your eyes open for these glaciers that fall from the ceiling. The ones that are blue are the ones that come down. Kill the first skeleton you see and grab the pill. The second door you find will bring you to a battle with this bull carrying an axe that throws cows at you and wants you to move it. Hey, <laughs> you get it? Move it. <laughs> uh, just fire at it. Fly to the opposite side of him and repeat the process. Next, you'll get a refill of your prescription after you kill this floating vampire ghost guy. After a pretty short trip, you'll encounter the second boss, who's supposed to be the guardian of the giant sphinx. But it's just an outline of some guy. My legs are asleep? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Well, he fires ectoplasm at you. I had no idea that's what ectoplasm looks like. He's real easy to beat, just lay down and fire, you'll take less hits that way. Later on, be sure to kill this other vampire to grab another pill. Right after that, you'll face off against a giant spider, this time it's actually alive. Fly over it whenever it passes by and try to avoid as many of these X's as you can while shooting. Yeah, there's supposed to be webs, but I guess the generic X works just as well. So you got your key and now you can head on to round 4, which takes place in a castle. A castle that's also infested with snakes, alligators, scorpions that fire shitballs at you, and floating rocks.